So we've been talking about mass spectrometry, and remember that uh, we've been talking about uh, electron impact ionization mass spectrometry, and we have some way of inserting our sample. Uh, we then accelerate our uh, ionized sample through, and we can measure the mass of not only the sample, but anything it might fragment into. Because we're using electron impact ionization, we make these very reactive radical cations, and they often split up into smaller ions. We talk about these as being daughter ions. So here's an example. If we put something like propane, uh, we subjected it to electro electron impact ionization, formed the radical cation. Many of the bonds can break. Uh, you will see evidence for lots of bond breakages. We don't typically look and try to identify every peak unless we happen to be specialists in mass spectrometry. We're really looking to things to confirm our structure or help us identify the structure that of something we've made. So we're looking for specific peaks. So for something like propane, it could split into a couple of different possibilities uh, amongst others, but these are the ones that we would expect the most. We could break the CH bond of the radical cation and we could do it such that we formed an ethyl cation. That is the only thing that our mass spectrometer would detect because uh, in this particular reaction because it's positively charged. The radical that's formed would be invisible to this technique because it wouldn't make it around the corner. It's not charged and uncharged species are not detected. Now that same bond could break but the electrons travel with the ethyl portion so that we get an ethyl radical in which case we would see uh, evidence for the methyl Cation. Now, if we take a look at the mass spectrum of propane, we do see uh, there's our molecular ion. The largest peak is the base peak, and in this particular instance, that's the ethyl cation. And we also do see evidence for the methyl cation around there, not around there, at exactly 15 mass units. Now, notice there's lots of other peaks here, and we could identify those. We could do lots of uh, different calculations to figure out. But what we're really trying to do is confirm that our sample was propane or, or uh, something else. And again, we're talking about these, teaks in, these techniques in the context of structure determination. So let's take a look at another example. Here we have 2-methylbutane. We subject that to electron impact and form the radical cation. Now this can break into many species. And what we want to do is be able to predict some of the significant peaks that we might find. As you saw in the last slide, this is determined by thermodynamics. So the, the lowest energy pathway will give us the most abundant uh, fragmented ion or daughter ion. Sometimes the most abundant cation in our mass spectrum may be the molecular ion, but often it isn't. Often uh, it's a fragment, a daughter fragment that we see. So in this instance, what we want to do is just start looking at what bonds we can break and what the, re the resultant products would be. So we could expect to break any one of these carbon-carbon bonds. I'll talk about carbon-hydrogen bonds in just a second. So if we broke this bond, or in fact this bond, we would expect to see this cation, which has a mass of 57. Now, it could break in such a way such that we got the methyl cation and this radical, and it would do some of that, but this is a much lower energy pathway reaction. So most of the cleavage that occurs at one of those two bonds I indicated earlier would give this cation. We could also cleave this bond, and if we cleave this bond, we would produce the isopropyl cation and the ethyl radical. We would not see the, the radical, we would see only the cation. And it is possible that this would break such to give us this cation and the other radical. So we expect to see these being fairly large peaks because these are going to be predominant in these two reactions. And we may see evidence for the corresponding cations of these things that are that are in this particular equation radicals. So let's take a look uh, and 
see what we see. So if we were to break and form, we're looking for 57 of 43, and we see that our, our base peak is at 43. And another significant peak is that peak at 57. Now, I mentioned that we might see those other partners. Here's the ethyl cation, and here's the methyl cation. We do see them. Turns out that the ethyl cation does give us a significant number. There's a lot of other peaks here that I'm not really going to worry about just yet. Now, let's take a look at a couple other things. Look at how small the molecular ion peak at 72 is. So that tells us that we have some relatively weak carbon-carbon bonds and this molecule fragments fairly readily. Now, you might ask, look at this particular reaction. We could cleave off and break this carbon-hydrogen bond and form a tertiary cation. Why would we not expect that to be the base peak? That's the most stable cation. Well, the answer is, that is a very stable cation, and indeed we would see it, uh, and we see evidence of it. We see it right there at 71. But the other partner in this reaction is a hydrogen atom, and the carbon-hydrogen atom, the carbon-hydrogen bond in the radical cation is going to be much stronger than any of those carbon-carbon bonds. So this particular reaction doesn't happen because of the thermodynamics of the reaction, which is higher due to the formation of that hydrogen atom, which is just a hydrogen radical or atom. So even though we, we may see some evidence of it, and that, that helps us with the identification of the species. Uh, but the predominant one, the base peak in this instance, is the one that formed that isopropyl cation. And the next one was that secondary cation that's formed by cleavage of these carbon-carbon bonds there. So we've already visited, we've talked a little bit about the fragmentation of hexane. So C6H14, you want to get used to doing some math. So know your 12 times tables. 6 times 12 is 72, plus 14 is 86. So our molecular ion would be expected to be at 86, and we see it. And then we can break any of these bonds, and we can break them such that we form the cation on one side or the other. We're going to be looking for these. This is very typical of a straight chain uh, hydrocarbon, okay? So let's take a look what happens if we have other isomers of this particular hydrocarbon. So here we see 2-methylpentane, still C6H14. There's our molecular ion at 86. Now, what we hope to do is see, so that's our M plus peak. We would expect that we would be able to break this bond fairly easy. And if we did that, we might expect to see this cation and this radical. This particular cation has a mass of 43. Now, we might also expect to cleave these bonds, right? Both of those would give us secondary cations. Uh, so this one is M minus 15, 29, 43, M minus 43. So in fact, one of the reasons this is so large is because we might also see this primary cation. We wouldn't see the, the corresponding radical, but it also has a mass of 43. But if we break these methyl groups off, we also expect to see an M minus 15 peak that's that peak there at 71. So we do see evidence of this as well. So that's one reaction, fragmentation reaction, and another one would give us this cation and the methyl radical. So this is completely in line with what we see. We expect to see two large peaks where uh, also expect to see the base peak to be due to the more stable cation of these reactions, and that's exactly what we see. Let's continue to take a look now. Let's move around. Let's take a look at 3-methylpentane. Again, our mass doesn't change because we have the same empirical, or the same molecular formula, just the connectivity is different. And now we expect to either be able to break here, here, or here. 
Because of the symmetry of this molecule, we expect a lot of fragmentation there and there. Now, those would give us 70, uh, I'm sorry, secondary radicals. And so if we, let's break here. And if we break that, we're just going to see this cation and the ethyl radical. So we're going to see an M minus 29 peak. Get used to some math. This is an ethyl radical, um, so it would have a mass of 29. That's what we're losing. We're seeing the other one. Do we see the M? So 86 minus 29, it's going to give us 57. There we go. We see a large peak at 57, and in fact, it's the base peak. The other reaction that we may do is to cleave here. If we cleave that off, we're also going to be expecting to see an M minus 15 peak, and we see that right here. Our base peak, our molecular ion. So that's what we're going to look for here. Now, we do see some other peaks. As I mentioned, uh, we can get the ethyl radical, we, we might, ex I'm sorry, ethyl cation, we might see that, and we do. Uh, 41 is not one we expect to see. 43, those are odd. So sometimes it's a little bit more involved in how those other peaks are formed. And we'll talk a little bit about that further fragmentation in a bit. But right now, I just want to get you used to looking at a molecule, breaking some bonds, and looking for the evidence you're going to be looking for in a mass spec. So now we have a final isomer of C6H14, 2,3-dimethylbutane. Uh, How would we expect this thing to fragment? We would expect it to fragment uh, here. That would give us an isopropyl cation and an isopropyl radical. Uh, doesn't matter where the electron goes, it goes either way. And we see a large peak at 43, which is exactly what we would expect. We might also expect fragment of these methyl groups to form the secondary cations, and we see that in the M-15 peak right here at 71. We also do expect the peak at 43. We're not surprised to see it as the base peak because that's a stable secondary cation, and the other product is a stable secondary radical. We see less of this peak, even though it's also a secondary cation, but the radical part of this reaction is a methyl radical, which is much less stable. So that's a higher energy reaction, and we see less of the peak due to that reaction. So all of this can be tied back to Bonstrang's, uh, which tells us something about the thermodynamics of the reaction, uh, and, and that's what we're looking for. So let's keep going. I want you guys, uh, I have three of these uh, mass specs. So I want you to take a look and see if you can assign these structures to each of the mass spec. What are we going to look for? So we're going to look for cleavage of certain bonds. If we cleave this particular bond right here on this molecule, we would expect to see a very large peak for the t-butyl cation. That would be quite a stable cation. I would be very surprised if this wasn't the molecular ion for this particular case. Now notice over here, we can form tertiary cations by breaking this bond or this bond, but they're going to have different masses. So we would expect to see two peaks due to, to, to those particular bond cleavages. And the same goes over here. Okay, So see if you can take a look at these three and assign them. And we'll talk about that sometime in class or perhaps I'll make another video. So let's keep going. The amount that a molecule fragments depends on the strength of the bonds in that molecule. We've already seen the mass spec for benzene in a previous uh, video, and this thing broke up very little. We saw the molecular ion, and in fact, the molecular ion was the base peak in that particular mass spec. Uh, now, if we have substituted aromatics, they can break up a little bit, and maybe uh, we'll see another peak as the base peak. That is not the molecular ion. But if we have a purely, as in benzene, we expect to see the molecular ion. So whether or not you see the molecular ion tells us something, and how big that peak is also tells us something else. If the molecular ion is the base peak, that tells you that the molecule has a lot of strong bonds. Now, as we go down uh, the series of 
functional groups, we see more and more fragmentation. So when we get down to things like branched hydrocarbons, we see a lot of fragmentation. Alcohols, a lot of fragmentation. Amines, we do see uh, fragmentation, but what's interesting about amines, and you'll see in just a little bit, is that they fragment, but not a lot. We see a couple of fragment peaks, and they dominate in the spectrum. So all of these things can help us determine the structural formula or confirm that we made something that we were trying to make. That's what we use it for. Uh, this is just to remind you of your curly arrow alerts. Now, when we're talking about radical cations, quite often we use these single-sided curly arrows because we're moving one electron at a time. Uh, most often in this course, you'll see me pushing arrows and making curly arrows with double-sided arrows. That means we're moving a pair of electrons. So we're going to see that in just a sec. Right now, in fact. Here we go. So here's fragmentation in alcohol. A very common fragmentation uh, event in an alcohol is what we call alpha cleavage. So here's our alcohol, and we often break the bonds next to that carbon that has the OH to it because we form these resonance stabilized cations. We can draw this as a carbocation or we can draw it as an oxonium ion through resonance. Resonance is very important in this course, so make sure you understand it. Okay, so we expect to see a lot of cleavage of that bond. Now, I don't know what this is, but we might expect a lot of cleavage there as well. This happens a lot in alcohols. Another thing that we see in alcohols is the loss of water. Now, I want to be a little bit careful. We see this, but the resultant radical cation that forms from the loss of water is often not a very large uh, peak, but we often look for it. If we think we have a, a, an alcohol, we're going to look for it. Uh, so here we see an example, and I'm using my one-sided arrows because we're taking this, this electron and we're going to form a throw it in there along with one of the electrons that's in this bond and we're going to form a carbon oxygen uh, double bond and then we're going to form this species over here that's going to end up being a radical with my lone electron right there. So there's my radical and there's my axonium cation. Terminal alcohols will almost always have a peak at 31. I'm not saying it's a real large peak but we will see a peak at 31. If we have long chain alcohols, primary alcohols in particular, and we have a hydrogen atom on the, there's our alcohol, there's, here's the alpha carbon, this would be the beta, gamma, and the delta carbon. If we have a hydrogen on the delta a hydrogen, we can get another rearrangement where we form water, an alkene, and we see this cation in the M minus 46 peak because we're losing both of these stable molecules from our initially formed radical cation to form a new cation. This is actually a radical cation as well and we can see it in the mass spec uh, at M minus 46. So let's take a look at uh, this particular alcohol. Uh, we have one, two, three, four. So we have C4. You guys should be able to tell me how many hydrogens. We got three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does that make sense? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes more sense. Okay. There's our molecular formula. Uh, so we could then say, what's the mass? Well, we got 48 mass units in carbon, plus 10 is 58, uh, plus 16 is 74. And we look at our molecular ion, look how tiny that molecular ion is. Now, as it turns out in mass spec, uh, especially modern day mass spec, because we have everything on computer display, we could expand this and we would actually be able to see that there is a peak right there. It's very small in this instance. I would not expect you to pick it up, but it is labeled in this particular instance. Now let's take a look at what bonds we expect to break. We expect to break off a methyl group because we're gonna. We expect to break off that uh, bond, that group bonded to the alpha carbon. We also expect to break off 
an ethyl group. And we see uh, M minus 15, that indicates that we broke this bond. And we see M minus 29 or M minus, yeah, M minus 29, that's the breakage of this bond to form the other cation. We see that. And it's, we also see a 31, but we want to be careful. It's not a primary alcohol, so we didn't necessarily expect to see that, and we do. But let's take a look at another one. Here we have a long chain. This is just hexanol. And let's take a look. Uh, C6H14, so we get 72 plus 14 makes 86 plus 16 more. Okay, so our mass here is 72. 82, 86, 92, 102. So we're going to look in this particular mass spec. You can almost see it right there, but it's at the limits of what we can see, uh, not only because it's small, but also because our spectrum didn't go out that far. But we do see quite a significant peak at 84 here. That's 102 minus 18. That's the loss of water, and we see that peak. Our base peak in this instance is due to this M minus 46 that we talked about. So it breaks off to give water and a molecule of ethylene, and that's our major peak. And we do expect to see a peak at 31 because it's a primary alcohol, so we just look to see if we have that there. If I put this in the machine and I thought I had this molecule, those are probably the things I would look for, uh, okay? And then I would feel pretty confident that I have this molecule. What would happen if we had two hexanol? So if we have two hexanol, notice now we don't get those same types of reactions. Uh, we do still see a uh, peak here at 84, okay, so we can still lose water. We typically expect to see that for any alcohol. If there's hydrogen atoms on the carbon next to uh, the carbon that has the alcohol, okay? So, but the other thing we see is a peak here at 87. That's due to cleavage of this bond. And we expect to see that because that is the alpha cleavage that we expect to see, okay? So we expect to see an M minus 15 peak. We're losing that methyl group. Now we expect this to uh, break as well, okay? And if this one breaks, we're going to see a peak at M minus 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be M minus 57. That's 102. So expect to see a big peak at 45. Here's our base peak. And if we look down here, it's at 45. So we do see that uh, peak at 45. Okay. So we expect to see a peak at 45. Uh, uh, and there's another peak here at 69. Can I figure it out? Probably, but I don't really need to because I've, I've gotten enough information that I'm confident that I made this molecule. Or I, I put this molecule in my mass spectrometer. Uh, let's keep going. Let's take a look at 3 hexanol. Same thing. Now we're expecting to break this bond and see evidence for it and this bond. And we're expecting the charge to hang around on that carbon next to the oxygen. So we're expecting to see two cations, and now I'm going to draw them. We're expecting to see this cation, sorry, I'm going to draw it. that canonical structure, okay, and the other one we expect to see is this cation, because we just cleaved either this bond or this bond. Now we might see species do to here, so so we might see a peak at 29. We look, we do, we see a peak at 29 there. Here, one, two, three, peak at 43. Uh, there is a peak at 43. But we expect these to be our two largest peaks, okay? And where are these? This is the peak we would see at, what is that, 70? What do we expect it to be? So let's... Let's add it up here. We have a methyl group that has a mass of 15, 14, 14, 13, and 17. So we have 17, 30, 
68, 68, 69, boom, 69, right there. I'm sorry, that's not right, is it? 17, 40, 40, I'm sorry, 30, 54, 64, 68, 73, 83. Ooh. And this other peak, this one is gonna be, uh, let's just move it. Let's move it here and let's add it up. So we have 15, 14, 13, and 17, we have 10, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, sixty-nine. Oops, I'm sorry, fifty-nine. And there's our peak right there at fifty-nine. And this peak is seventy-three. There we go. Uh, we also have a peak at what we said twenty-nine, forty-three. We expect to see all these peaks. What's this peak? I don't know. It. I'd have to figure it out, and I have enough here uh, to, to be confident uh, in my assignment. A means undergo a very specific type of fragmentation that gives us this positive charge. Uh, you know, either we, we have this uh, aminium cation form or carbocation form. These are just resonance structures, but we expect to see alpha cleavage with amines. And if we take a look, here's two mass spectra for a primary amine. So with a primary amine, we expect to see a large peak at 30. And as it turns out, that just dominates. Uh, we do see our molecular ion. And for amines, particularly prime, uh, sorry, any amine, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look. So let's take a look. Cleavage here gives us this. Uh, fragmentation to form this cation at 58 and we see our molecular ion and one at 58. So amines are very distinctive. We, we don't see a lot of fragmentation but we see specific fragmentation to form these uh, aminium type of cations. Fragmentation in ethers very much like uh, fragmentation in alcohols. We expect to see cleavage of the uh, carbon-carbon bonds, the, the things bonded to that alpha carbon, we expect to see cleavage there, there, okay? So in this particular one, we expect to see a lot of cleavage for uh, M minus 15, 87. And we can also get cleavage to form the uh, oxy radical along with whatever was bonded to the oxygen. So for this particular species, we expect to see something at 43, uh, and we expect to see something at 87. That's due to breakage of this bond to form 87, and we could break this bond or this bond to give us the oxy-centered radical as well as the isopropyl cation at 43. Now, now I'm interested in this peak at 45 because that's the base peak, and 45 seems a little odd. What happens with this is we get fragmentation of... Uh, our molecular ion, I'm sorry, one of our daughter ions, it fragments further to give us a new ion at 45. Now, I don't want to get into this too, too much here. We'll talk about this later in the year as we go through the course, the fragmentation of the daughter ions to give, I suppose you could call them granddaughter ions. But that does happen, and that explains this peak at 45 in this particular instance. Now here's a problem. I want you to stop the video and take a look at this and see if you can assign these two ethers to their corresponding mass specs. What do we expect? 
I'm going to pause for a second, but stop the video, see if you can figure it out. Well, we're expecting alpha cleavage, so we expect cleavage of that bond and that bond. Same with here, right? So let's take a look. There we go. This is the mass spectrum for this one. We expect to see large M minus 15 peak. We do. We do not to see expect to see a large M minus 15 peak with this one. Okay. So we expect this one because of uh, the symmetry. We expect to see a couple of different peaks. Uh, 43, 57. We see these. Okay. So uh, 1, 2, 3. There's the peak at 43. We be, break uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, break that bond. So, let's see if you can figure that one out. And finally, let's go back to hexane. We often use multiple spectral, uh, multiple spectra to determine our molecule. So, if we had this mass spec, we would be pretty certain. But if we then looked at the IR, remember what IRs look like. This tells us that this thing only contains carbon and hydrogen. Uh, once we know the molecular mass, we can use the rule of 13 to come up with a hydrocarbon framework uh, or, or molecular mass, and then look at the fragmentation to try and get the connectivity. So we can use all of those pieces of this puzzle. We could actually determine this structure uh, from probably these two simple pieces of information. Now, you can get a lot of structures, and one of the things to do once you think you know the structure, all you have to do is throw SDBS into the Google, and it will get you to this site. Uh, it'll get you actually to the page before the site, and then you have to uh, just sign in. Uh, but uh, this is free, and it gives you lots of different spectra. You can get mass spectra. You can get IR spectra. As you'll see as we go on, you can get NMR spectra and other kinds of uh, spec spectroscopic graphs uh, to help you. So that's, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much.